everybody said amen well glory to God just go ahead and give God some praise right there in your living room before you hop into that word before you take your seat um, <clears throat> this is going to be a good word tonight and I want to promise you that that this is not a word that's designed to condemn anybody but it's designed to bring to our attention what we're called to do with this thing called our mouth <laughs> you'd be surprised that most people don't know the chief purpose of our mouths is to praise the Lord our Father first, but it's not to tear people down. It's not to backbite. It's not to gossip. It's not to tear, tear, to tear organizations down. It is first to glorify God. So I want to talk about the power of the tongue and the key word being power because the Word of God says this, 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 this little member in our mouths is life and death in it. It's life and death in it. Think about that. Also think about when you got born again. Romans, Rom, Romans 10, 9, verse 9 through 10, you, you, you use this mouth to get born again. You confess with this mouth. This mouth is powerful. So there's a connection in your spirituality with this mouth. You got born again with this mouth, and, 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 and you had to believe it in your heart, but you had to confess it first. So this mouth that we're going to talk about tonight is powerful. Now, I want to warn you. I want to warn you. Husbands, don't be staring at your wives. Wives, don't be staring at your husband. Kids, don't be staring at your parents. Parents, don't be staring at your kids because we are all guilty of our mouths getting out of control every now and then. Amen? So we're going to hop into this word. We're going to hop into this word. We're going to talk about the power of the tongue. Listen, <clears throat> I want to read this to you before we, before we go to the word. We're going to be going to James 3. James 3. <laughs> James 3. But listen to this. Our tongue is one of the most important parts of our body. It is small, but we depend on it to speak, sing, praises, taste, and eat. When it comes to our speech, we have hundreds of opportunities every day to get it right or blow it to badgers. <laughs> when it comes down to it, all words originate from our heart. The word says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Your mouth can never fool your heart. Your intelligence can never fool your heart. Your, 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 your brain can never fool. Out of the abundance of what's in your heart, it's going to come out of your heart. Mouth. Let's look at James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. James 3. <clears throat> now, one thing you want to know about the mouth is that thing can get away from you every now and then. And you, you look up and you have ruined the moment, ruined the date, ruined everything. And, 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 and not even know it. Because, because you're not monitoring your heart. You're not monitoring what's going on in your eye gates, your ear gate, ear, ear gate in your heart. You're not monitoring that thing, and if you're not careful, anything can get in it. See, the thing about the ground, you can put bad seed in it, you can put good seed in it. It doesn't, it doesn't discriminate. It just, it just grows. It just, it just it brings forth the harvest. So you have to guard your heart. Why? Because out of it comes the issues of life. James 3, look at this. Verse 3. Behold, we put bits into the mouths of, of, of horses, that they may obey us. Now, you know a horse is, I think it's 2,000 plus pounds. They put a small bit in his mouth. That they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which, though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with every small helm. Next verse. Whithersoever the, govern, the, the, the governor listeneth, even so, even so, this tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it setteth on fire of hell. Verse 7. For every kind of beast of birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. Now, 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 pause right there. You have been to the circus before, and you've seen elephants, you've seen lions, you've seen tigers, 
and those trainers have tamed them. They're ferocious. I've seen guys put their heads inside of an alligator's mouth, and it, and, it, and it doesn't snap. I don't understand it, but they do it. I've seen guys swim with great whites, swim with killer whales. They can tame them. They can train them. But watch this. Next verse. But the tongue <laughs> can no man tame. What does that mean? Who tames that tongue? God. That's why you got to keep God in your heart, keep his word in your heart. He says no man can tame that tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Next verse. Out of the same mouth as a believer, blessing and cursing can come. My brother and Paul says, these things ought not to be so. Next verse. Does a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter water? No, it does not. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine, of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water? Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversations his works with meeks. Of wisdom. Now, let me see that in the Passion Translation. We should have that. Glory to God. You know, the horses have bits and bridles in their mouths so that we can control and guide their large body. And the same with mighty ships, though they are massive and driven by fierce winds, yet they are steered by a tiny rudder at the direction of the person, at the helm, the captain. And so the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it carries great power. Just think of how a small flame can set a huge forest blaze. And the tongue is a fire. It can be compared to the sum total of wickedness and is the most dangerous part of our human body. It corrupts the entire body and is a hellish flame. It releases a fire that can burn throughout the course of human existence. For every wild animal on earth, including birds, creeping reptiles, and creatures of the sea and land, have all been overpowered, watch this now, overpowered and tamed by humans. But that tongue is not able to be tamed. It's a fickle, unrestrained evil that spews out words full of toxic poison. We use our tongue to praise God our Father and then turn right around and curse who was made in his very image. You use your tongue to praise, the God, praise our God, praise our Father, and turn right around and curse the same believer that was created in his likeness and his image. I'm talking to your wife. I'm talking to your husband. You use the same mouth to praise your God, praise your Father, and turn right around and cut the spouse that was created in God's image. And Paul says, this should not be so. Out of the same mouth, we, put, we, we pour out words of praise one minute and curses the next. My brothers and sisters, this should not never be. Would you look for olives hanging on a fig tree or go pick figs from a grapevine? Is it possible that fresh, bitter, fresh and bitter water can flow out of the same spring? So neither can a bitter spring produce fresh water. If you consider yourself to be wise and one, one who understands the ways of God, understands the ways of God, Advertise it with a beautiful, fruitful life guided by wisdom's gentleness. That's what your mouth is. Your mouth should be, your mouth should be a beacon of wisdom, gentleness. Now, we're going to break this down in, 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 in James here. Think about it. Horses, large animals, are guided by small bits. And our lives are guided by our small member, a small member in our mouths, and it's called a tongue. Now, I'm going to share a story with you. God forbid we'll be honest in church. I'm going to be very transparent with you. God forbid we be honest in church. I want to be open and honest with you. A lot of times the Holy Spirit can tell you, don't say that. Don't say that to Z. Don't bring that up to Z. Don't utter that to Z. And you think you're smarter than the Holy Spirit, Derek. And guess what I do? I'll go ahead and say it anyway. Why? Because a lot of times as believers, we don't realize God does not want you to use your mouth to address things all the time. 
He wants you to use your, your, your praise and the Holy Spirit and address it internally. And sometimes you gotta, you, you got to learn the ministry of quietness. You can't move that mouth. So God and the Holy Spirit will be saying, hey, don't say this, don't say that, don't do this. You're going to ruin the evening. You're going to mess this thing up. She knows how to do this. My God, you're not, a, you're not a father. You're a husband. Stop trying to parent your wife with your mouth. Stop trying to parent your husband with your mouth. And, man, the Holy Spirit can be rolling in us. And guess what that little member will do? It will go ahead and say it anyway. My grandma used to tell me, boy, if you don't get down out of that tree, you're going to break your neck. Boy, if you don't get out and buy that street, a car going to come, come down here and knock you from here to yonder. My God, grandma, what was she doing? Man, if, look, setting things in motion with her mouth. I look back on that now and say, my God, how in the world did I make it to be 18 with all of the stuff that was confessed over my life with, 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 with that little member that was, that was projecting death? And my wife would look at me and go, boy, go sit down somewhere. Did you pray this morning? Yeah, I prayed. Did you get in your word this morning? Yeah, I did. Well, I can't tell it because no wisdom gentleness is coming out of your mouth. My God, you're supposed to have praise coming out of your mouth, love coming out of your mouth. What is wrong with you? Is it, is it that time of the month for you? What is wrong with you? And what happens is we, 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 we don't want to pay attention to the words we use. The Bible says you will give an account for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. I'm reminded of two guys that I admire, I look up to, I admire their countenance, their disposition, but the most thing I admire about them is the discipline on their mouths, and it's Deacon David Wooten and it's uh, Elder Darnell Lamont. They have tremendous discipline on their mouths. I never hear them gossiping or, 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 or puffing themselves up or, or, or downgrading anybody or, 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 just, or just, just spewing out words they are men of few words, but their lives speaks volumes. And let me tell you something. They have mastered what a lot of us should pay attention, pay attention to. They have mastered the art of quietness with their mouths. Now, how many people know you ain't got to say something on everything? You don't have to open your mouth on everything. You know, I can be, I can be you know, I'm the kind of guy that I, I, I get ready to take a shower I go in there, I turn the shower on, I want to come back, I want to see steam everywhere. I want to see steam flowing all over the place. I want to see the windows fogged up, everything, and, 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 and I, can, I, can, I can see a little steam creeping out, and, and by the time I get ready to go, I hear the water go off. I said, now, who turned the water off? Now, I'm a grown man. Who turned the water off? And I walk in there, and my wife has turned the water off, and the Holy Spirit would say, hey, 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 don't say nothing. Just reach down there to the thing and turn it back on. Okay, I got your Holy Spirit. You're right, you're right. Hey, 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 just don't say nothing now. Reach down there and turn on the thing. And I will do step one. I'll reach down there and turn on the thing. But here comes step two. Here comes step two. Now, once you get in there and you're still thinking about it, you got to control your mouth. And once you get out of this thing and you're still thinking about it, you got to control your mouth. So she doesn't come in during the shower, but she pops in when I get done. And the Holy Spirit will say, control that mouth. Watch your mouth. Life and death tonight is in that tongue. <laughs> Life and death and your intimacy tonight is in that little mouth of yours. And I tell you, sometimes I pass the test and sometimes I feel it. And I'll just, I, I, I'll just blurb it out. I say, hey, you do know I'm a grown man, right? Huh? What are you talking about? It's been 15 minutes past, 20 minutes past. You do know I'm a grown man, right? A grown man, what are you talking about? Listen, just when I turn the shower on, I like for the water to run. We both pay bills here. Just let it run. And I'm going to get in the shower. I'm not going to turn it on and go to Target. I'm not going to turn it on and go to Publix. I'm coming back to it. But you know what? I didn't have to say that. I didn't have to say that. Why? Because just two hours ago, I was on the prayer call praising God with her, lifting my hands. So it's confusing to believers around us when one day, one minute, we're, 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 we're edifying them with our mouths, and the next minute, we're tearing them down. And let me say this to you. Quietness. Quietness with an attitude is talking. Quietness with an attitude is still talking. And a lot of times we think, I'm just going to be quiet. Yeah, but you're quiet, but you got an attitude. You're pouting, and God wants us to come higher in him. God wants us to be a witness for him. So it's not just in our actions, it's in our speech as well. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs 25. Woo! 
It's, 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 it's tight, but it's right. Proverbs 25, verse 23. Now, you, 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 you have to, uh, ah, boy, you have to hear what I'm saying tonight. Proverbs 25, verse 23. The north wind drives away rain. The north wind drives away rain. So does an angry countenance, a back biting tongue. In your notes, you should never use your mouth to talk about people who can't defend themselves. You should never use your mouth and your tongue to talk about people who can't defend themselves. You got to learn the art of put them on the phone. You got to learn the art of let's do a three-way. You got to learn the art of let's do a FaceTime. When what you're hearing is contrary to what the person is presenting to you, but somebody else's backbiting tongue is putting them in a bad light, you need to say put them on three-way. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to stop that kind of backbiting tongue from hanging out in your circle. The only way you like a backbiting tongue is you have one yourself. The only way we allow a backbiting tongue to hang around us is we have one ourselves. And listen to me, you got to speak back to that backbiting tongue and say, listen, put them on the phone. I don't believe that. Put them on three-way. I don't believe that. Why? The north wind drives away rain and so does an angry countenance at a backbiting tongue. Listen, when some people are talking, you just got to frown up and say, I don't even know what you're talking about. Break that down for me. You know, you got to frown up a little bit at them. You got to look confused. Like, what are you talking about? You know, I remember, you know, my dad, <laughs> my wife, you know, as, as a spouse sometimes, you'll tell a subtle lie if you can detect the countenance on that wife's face or that husband's face. I said, um, she said, uh, uh, did, you, did you open this up and, and, and not close it? And I said, uh, boy, the look on her face, I, ah. Uh, I don't know who did that. It might have been Marvion or whatever, whatever it is. And it's like, you just told a lie. You just told a fat out lie. Well, and, and, and I'm going to tell you why you told a lie. Because you've seen the countenance on that face. And you put that in reverse. When somebody is talking contrary to the word of God about someone else, an entity, gossiping, downing somebody, just start to look at them and just frown a little bit. And that frown simply says, I don't understand what you're saying. And guess what? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna turn them away from that com- conversation with, with that small member in, in, in your mouth. Let's go to Proverbs 25, 11. 25, 11. <clears throat> A couple of verses over. Woo! 25, 11. And we're going to go 25, 11 through uh, verse 15. A word with our mouths, fitly spoken. It's like apples of gold in pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ointment of fine gold, so is the wise reprover upon an obedient ear. Think about that. As the coal of the snow in the time of harvest, so is the faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. Whoso boasted himself of false gift is like clouds in the wind without rain. Here we go. For by long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue, somebody sitting right there in your couch, or in your car, on your patio, you need to declare over your mouth, I have a soft tongue. And a soft tongue breaks a bone. Breaks a bone. Have you found, honey, eat so as much as sufficient for thee, lest thee be fulfilled, fulfilled therewith, and vomit it? Where, where, <laughs> withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. <clears throat> and a man beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Our tongues, hold on, our tongues should not be used to tear men down. And a lot of times we can, we, can, we can disguise it as, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being objective. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying what I see. I'm just, I'm just expressing what I see. 
Well, if, if, if you leave somebody in, bad, somebody in a bad light with their mouth, you didn't speak right. You did, not, you, did not, uh, you did not report right. You did not leave them in a good light. And what that is, that's a tongue that's out of control. Our mouth should be used to edify men and edify God. Edify men and edify God. That's not to say that you can't say, hey, I don't agree with that. But you can't say, I don't agree with that because he is this, 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 and this. You can't say that. Why? Because he's not there to defend himself. That tongue is a powerful member, and that tongue has caused divorces. That tongue will break hearts. That tongue will cause wars. That tongue will, will create murders. That tongue is so powerful. And I want to say this to you. As a married man or a married woman, your sex, your breast, your hips, your body, lady, woman, will not trump your bad mouth. Sooner or later, he's going to get away from you. Why? Because that mouth can leave you lonely and friendless. Why? Because it can build up and it can tear down. And a lot of times for Christian, for Christian men and Christian women, and, and I know this for myself, I had this revelation uh, 15 years ago when me and my wife almost got a divorce. I had this revelation. You do not have the corner market on your spouse's heart. God does. God has that. So Derek, watch your mouth because over time, those words can take root. Those words keeps ringing in their brain banks, and you're trying to figure out, why aren't you flowing here? I'm flowing because you've cut me up several times, and you never repented. Be saying I'm sorry is not repentance. Be cooking a meal is not repentance. Having sex and not repenting, that, that, that ain't going to get it over time. That mouth and that tongue will erode the morale of your spouse, so we must pay attention to it. Listen to this first thought. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> Listen to this. We can be well-versed in church, but the minute we open our mouths, it either validates or contradicts our Christianity. On our jobs, we can be well-versed in church, in our ministries, in our departments, in our pulpits. We can be well-versed in church, but the minute we open our mouths, it either validates or contradicts our Christianity. Why? Because people do not pay attention to the car you drive and the clothes you wear and the house you live in when you call yourself a believer. What they pay attention to is, what's coming off your mouth? That's why you can't meet with the fellas talking about hee hee ha ha, you want to get a beer? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. You, you can't be doing that. You can't be with your girlfriends gossiping, backbiting in the name of y'all close and all this kind of stuff. If you're hanging around three to five women that every time you guys get together or on your text thread, you are, they are tearing down somebody else, you're not hanging with eaglets. You're hanging with buzzards. And you need to get away from that. Get around some women who are edifying God, edifying the next lady, edifying their husband, edifying their kids. Get around those women. Why? Because you want to fly high with the eagles. If you stayed low enough with your mouth, you're going to find yourself around buzzers. And let, me say, and let me say this. Husbands, with your mouth, you can set things in motion that your wife, it's hard for her to even unhear it. So you got to stay away from things like, my God, you put on 45 pounds since you had the baby. Let's go out here and walk. You better watch your mouth. Number one, you better watch your mouth because she's got a 38 revolver. You better watch your mouth. My, my, my God, I, I mean, my, every time I turn around, you got to do X, Y, and Z. Every time I turn around, you buy some clothes. Every time I turn around, why don't you just lose, lose a couple of pounds? So you got, and, 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 and in the name of motiva motivation, you're tearing down. But over time, that's going to erode her confidence. And you want to keep that mouth in control. God created this whole universe with his mouth. Just saying things and seeing them. And he tells us life and death is in the power of our tongues. Listen to this next thought. Hallelujah. The three gatekeepers of our mouths, the three gatekeepers of our mouths should be, is it kind, what you're about to say? Is it true, what you're about to say? And is it necessary? The three gatekeepers of our mouths. Before you speak, is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it true? 
Is it necessary? Now, you remember those two gentlemen I talked about? I guarantee you, these gatekeepers are always running through their minds. Now, their wives may say, well, I don't know about all that. Well, if you stay in close proximity to anybody, you're going to poke one another with your porcupine. You, you, you're just going to do it. But, but I guarantee you, they ask themselves, what I'm about to say, is it kind? I mean, is it, is it, is it, is it, is it really necessary what I'm, what I'm about to say? Is, is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true what I'm about to say? And if they don't know, they don't speak. And what we do is we say, oh, boy, you're a man of few words. That's a great compliment. Because if you can't manage your words, you can talk a whole lot and be clean out of the will of God with your mouth. You can talk a whole lot and offending people. Everywhere you go, you're offending people. Why? Because you haven't got those three gatekeepers down. So you got to, before you utter the words to your spouse going forward, to your kids, to your parents, to your sibling, here's the gatekeepers you want. You want to ask yourself, is this kind of what I'm about to say? Is this even true? Is this even necessary? Sometimes, you know, I say stuff and it's not necessary. And the evening goes south. Sometimes my wife can say things and it's not necessary. And the evening can go south. So we've just learned to say, you know what? Is it a kingdom issue? Nope. Okay, we don't need to talk about it right now. Is it a kingdom issue? Nope. We don't need to have a 25-minute conversation about a drive-in window incident. I, 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 you know, you know, you, you, it's something about a spouse that summons you to 20-minute meetings all day, every day. We got to sit down. We got to talk about this. We got to talk about that. You got to ask yourself, listen, man, is it kind? <laughs> is it true? <laughs> is it necessary? Is it necessary for you to say this or say that? Is it necessary for her to say this or say that? That mouth, you got, you got to have those gatekeepers in place. Why? Because without them, we just say what's on our mind. And a lot of people pride themselves on saying, listen, I just speak my mind. And, 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 and that's not a good thing. I just speak my mind. That is not a good thing. You are, you, you, you're like a bull in a china shop. You, you're just, you've offended so many people and don't even know it. Why? Because you pride yourself on speaking your mind. Here's another thought. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Make sure you get these notes now. The tongue can incite negative emotions or it can incite positive emotions. The tongue itself can incite negative emotions or it can incite positive emotions. You know, the, the one thing I try to do and my wife tries to do and Marvion Ten is already trying to do, we try to, you know... We, we're a very silly family when the four of us are in the same room. So we're very silly, and, and, and everybody knows everybody like the palm of their hand. And, and, and I think it was today, I think it was today I was, I, I, I came in the kitchen, and, and I was doing something, and, and, and we're working, so on and so forth. And, 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 and Zaria, who's real, she's artsy, she's, she's very productive, and, 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 I, and I look at Marviante, and, and, and he's polo shirt, and he's khakis, and and, 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 and spare his shoes, and he's at the table. He's working, and, he, and he, he's, he's doing all this kind of stuff. And I look at Zaria. she got an art shirt on, and, and man, she's just looking like she's in the art district in California. And, and, and my little mouth, I said, hey, what you want to take from your brother now, what you want to learn from your brother is, you know, if, if, if you just go ahead and get spiffy, you know, while, while you're working from home, you can be productive. She looked right at me. She said, I am so freaking productive. Just like that. I'm so freaking productive. She said, Dad, I'm there. And she just went on and on and on. And you know what? You know, you know what? In that moment right there, did I incite negative emotions or positive emotions? Was it even necessary for me to say that? But sometimes we just walk in the room and we think we got a corner market on somebody's day or the corner market on somebody's feelings. And we can just say what we want to say. But if you're not inciting positive emotions that gives them a trajectory for the day to be uplifted, don't say nothing. It's not even necessary. Don't incite negative emotions. You, 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 you're not going to win in that relationship doing that. Now, you can, you can have a sibling. You can have a sibling. You can have a spouse. And you can incite negative emotions and not even know you're doing it because that mouth is on autopilot. And you don't have any gatekeepers over it. And God wants us to monitor those gatekeepers. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? But if you don't have those gatekeepers, you will, you will communicate like that heart 
is yours. And you can do whatever you want to with it. And you can drop any kind of verbal seeds you want to in it. Does it even make sense? Does it even make sense to lie down with somebody you say you love to death do your part and you tear them down with your words in the name of it's a stressful day, in the name of the kids are running around, and you insult the one that you said you want to live your life with? That does not make sense. And God is calling us higher to say what? Get the mouths under control. You know, one thing about, you, about, uh, about the team here, some of the people on staff, that one thing they know about me, I don't like generalities. I don't like that. If you're going to do a report and everything is general, I, I mean, what, what is it for? If, you, if you're going to come back and say, well, some people are saying, so, how many people? Because, see, that mouth is inciting, it's, 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 it's rising my emotions. Well, 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 you know, a few people are thinking, what, well, how many, three or five? Well, I'm just saying some of the teachers, they, well, how many teachers? I, I want to know. Well, I'm just saying some of the guys in the park, how, how many guys? Why? Because you're speaking in generalities, and what that does, it leaves blanks open. Is it 100 people or is it two people? Is it two parents or 12 parents? What's happening? That mouth can incite positive emotions or negative emotions. I'm reminded of a story. One time me and my wife were serving our, our, our pastor uh, uh, <laughs> in our previous church, and it was a, a service or whatever it was, and, 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 <laughs> and, and there was a miscommunication f- from the counting team, and, and, and they, they communicated with my wife, and my wife did not confirm the number that they gave her. She immediately, you know, texted him, and he was, oh, my God, glory to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Ran out of the house screaming, shouting to God. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Man, somebody done sold a million dollars into the thing. Oh, my God, just flying high off of what my wife had incited. And... She got word about three minutes later that they made a mistake. I said, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And that next morning, no, he called the house that night. So Derek, uh, what are you doing? I said, oh, man, I just, man, the word was just good. I just, man, it was just off the chain. Good, 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 good. Hey, are, are, are you busy? No, no, I'm, not, I'm good. What, what's that? What, the Lord saying something to you? No, nah, he's not saying anything to me. Uh, is uh, Z around anywhere? I said, uh, yeah, hold on, mute. Hey, get in here. Pass on the phone. Come on, hurry. Come on, come in. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Pastor, how you doing? So on and so forth. Da, da, da. And he said, uh, Z. Uh, matter of fact, I need both of you guys to hear me. I'm like, how did I get lumped in this? He said, Z, uh, here's what I need you to do. Um, when it comes to uh, serving us logistically, administratively, you are off the chain. But tonight, you didn't serve our emotions. You sent our emotions on a rocket ride, and now you bring us back down to earth. And I want you to really monitor yourself before you bring me that kind of emotion, that kind of information that incites a positive emotion, only to later on take me downhill. What is that? Listen, you have to monitor that mouth and pay attention to what you're about to say. When it comes to things of that magnitude, you have to pay attention to what you're about to say. So don't report in generalities to your boss. Your boss can't stand it. He don't like it. Well, hey, I'm in the banking. I just kind of let him know a few people, a few houses, a few clients. They don't like it. They want to know how many clients. So you want to use your mouth to incite positive emotions. Now, let me talk to you um, believers that have stormed out of the house before. Tongue talking, praise singing, ushering, greeting, teaching the kids, inspiring the youth, working in the parking lot. One little word that incites a negative emotion and you storm out of the house. You get in your car and you drive off. Because of that, you got to get your spirit under control. And the guy or the lady who's inciting those negative emotions, you got to pay attention to that. You said something tremendously harsh for her or him to storm out of the house. My goodness gracious. The Holy Spirit tells me sometimes, Derek, let up. 
She's got it. She understands. No, no, you take your hat off. Take your counselor hat off. Take your instructor's hat off. Take it off. Let up. Now, I don't know, Holy Spirit. Maybe she didn't get it. Let me just keep going. And, 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 and you know where that lands me? I tell you what, Derek, uh, we're on episode six. Yeah, we're on episode six. I tell you what, you can watch six through 12. And what I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to head back here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and read me a book or whatever it is. What is it? I just wouldn't let up. And my, my, my wife says, you know what? I'm out of here. Did we get it together later on? Yes, we did. But did I learn a lesson? Yes, I did. Your mouth incited negative emotions. And your wife said, I'm not going to sit here with that. I am headed back to the bedroom. And it's something about when humble people walk off and you're still talking. You feel stupid. You feel dumb. And they won't argue back with you. It's hard to win an argument with a humble person because you argue with yourself. And that's inciting negative emotions. Next thought. We're going to keep going through the word. We can't use our tongue to praise God our Father and then turn right around and curse a person who was made in his very likeness and image. Think about that. We use our tongue to praise God and turn right around and gossip about those who were born again. Gossip about those who were created in his likeness and his image. We can't use our tongues to do that. We can't use our tongue to praise God our Father and then turn right around and curse a person who was made in his likeness and his image. Glory to God. Let's keep going here. Woo. God help us. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Verse 29, if you can, me to get this ready for me in the uh, uh, Passion Translation and the Amplified Version. Ephesians 4. <laughs> you know, the thing about the Word of God, it speaks to you if you allow it. It just flat out, it, it course corrects your life if you just allow it. <laughs> Ephesians 4. Verse 29. You got that ready for me immediately in the King James Version? Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let's go ahead and go to my next thought. Ephesians 4, verse 29 in the Passion Translation and the Amplified. Glory to God. <clears throat> Listen to this thought. We will always bear the consequences of our harsh words. We will always bear the consequences of our harsh words. We're always going to bear the consequences of our harsh words. See, this is a flat-footed, basic one-on-one message. But I promise you, if you get the mouth in control, you can speak to those mountains and they will remove. They, they'll, they'll be moved, thrown into the sea. You can speak to them. You got to learn to speak to things also. See, a lot of our energy is going towards people with our mouths. You got to start speaking to things. What's a thing? Dead is a thing. You know, a disease is a thing. You know, somebody harassing your child is a thing. A sickness trying to harass your body is a thing. Start and learn how to speak to things and push them back versus inciting negative emotions into God's children. Amen? That's a good word. We got to learn how to do that. Now, let's go to Ephesians 4, verse 29. In the King James Version. Do we got it on the screens? We don't have it on the screens. God help us. Oh, boy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, technology. The number one rebellion in the church is the technology. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 4. Well, we got it. There we go. Get it ready for me in the Passion Translations and the Amplify. We're going to read the King James Version. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Let's look at that in there. <clears throat> nope. Ephesians 4, 29. Let's go to the Passion Translation. Thank you, Lord. And never let ugly or hateful words come out of your mouth. But instead, let words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. 
our words should be beautiful gifts that encourage others. And you got to be on guard against people who down others with sarcasm. You got to be on guard against that. Be on guard against that. Why? Because people can hide behind sarcasm and be brutally, verbally assaulting someone. One of the main disciplines I've had to get as a pastor, and I never understood it, uh, 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 what my pastor would say. My pastor would say, I'm a very patient man. I'm a very patient man. What does that mean? I can know that a guy has, has corrupt communication coming out of his mouth. I can know that a guy has corrupt communication coming out of his mouth, but guess what? I'm very patient, and, 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 and I don't act on that. Why? I depend on the Holy Spirit and God to correct that in him. Why? Evil communication. Think about this. Never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. And as a believer, we got to allow our words to be beautiful gifts that encourage others. So many arguments, so many uh, breakups, so many divorces can be deleted if we just set our minds to say, you know what, when I open my mouth, I'm going to be an encourager. When I open my mouth, it's going to be necessary. When I open my mouth, it's going to be kind. When I open my mouth, it's going to be true. Not half truth, not what somebody told you, not what somebody told them and then they told you. Nope. Stuff like that, stop repeating it. And don't say stuff like, I don't know if it's true, but here's what they said. If you don't know if it's, if you don't know it's true, just be quiet. I don't know if it's true, but here's what, here's, what, here's, what, here's what was emailed to me. If you don't know it's true, it should stop right with you and send it back downhill and go, you know what? You don't know if it's true, I'm not going to keep repeating it. See, gossip should stop at the believer who has control over their mouths and ears. It should pause right there. I say, what now? Nah, I, I don't know if this is even true. Why even forward this? Why even repeat this? Matter of fact, I'm going in reverse with it. Why are you sending this to me? Why would you, why would you give me this information? Were you there? No, I wasn't there. Okay, well, 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 well guard your mouth and don't send me that kind of information. Why? Because your mouths and our mouths are beautiful gifts that should encourage others. Next translation. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others. I am shocked at the amount of cursing sailors here the last two years. Cursing Christians. I'm talking just cursing, just, 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 just cursing all the time, jokingly cursing all this kind of stuff, and I'm not a deep Christian, but my, my I, I don't have to curse to communicate. I don't get upset and go off in curse words. I don't get upset and go blankety, 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 blank, and thinking I'm getting my point across, feeling good about getting my point across. To me, cursing is one of the most immature languages that anybody can employ. What are you saying? You can't come up with words, so you're just going to come up with stuff that just really don't mean nothing? But evil? Blankety, 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 blank. Hey, I'll, I'll repent later. I'm going to go ahead and say this. That is, to me, that is just, that is so immature. And that tongue, that little member, needs to be tamed by God. It needs to be tamed by God. It needs to be tamed by God. Why? It is a beautiful gift that should be used to encourage others. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words come out of our mouths, but only such speech as is good to building up others. Listen to this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Media, while I'm reading this thought, go ahead and get Proverbs 18, uh, 21 ready for me. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> when our mouths disregard the law of empathy, when our mouths disregard the law of empathy, we are susceptible to verbal error and hurt. When a person just throws out the law of empathy, you don't even think people have feelings. You don't even think that your words can send their feelings south. When our mouths disregard the law of empathy, we are susceptible to verbal error and hurt. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Thank you, Lord. Verse 21. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Have that ready for me in the Passion Translation and the message. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Let's see it in the Passion Translation. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. And the talkative person will reap the consequences. Let's see the next translation. Uh, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit you choose. <clears throat> Look at this. Hallelujah. Is that it? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. In the message translation. Hallelujah. The word says <clears throat> life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What is that saying? When you open your mouth, you either, you either giving life to a relationship or you're killing a relationship. When we open our mouths, we're either giving life to a person's life or we're giving death to a person's life. When we open our mouths concerning our lives, we're either giving life to it or we're giving death to it. That's why you got to wake up every single day confessing over your life, speaking life over the situation, life over your body, life over your marriage, life over your family, life over your business, life over your employment. The one thing I, I told my wife, she said, hey, I, 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 you, you know, we run the church. She said, she said we got to pay some bills. I said, I don't want to hear that no more. I said, just say we got to pay some expenses. I said, I don't want to hear bills no more. Bills don't even sound right to me. I said, I just, just, just say we want to pay some expenses. And I was talking to another guy, and he was like, yeah, man, I'm just, just kind of short on this and short on that. Blah, blah, blah. I said, stop saying you're short. Stop saying you're lacking something. Stop saying you don't have no money. Here's what I want you to say from now on. Just say, I have a temporary shortage of funds that God will address. Don't say you're broke no more. I have a temporary shortage of funds that God will address. Don't say I don't have no money. I have a temporary shortage of funds that God will address. That, to me, is giving life to a situation that looks bleak. In other words, don't say you're broke. Don't say you're in between paychecks. I have a temporary shortage, a temporary shortage of funds that God will address. I have a temporary shortage of funds that God will address. What is that? I'm speaking life into my finances. Even though I may be short, I'm speaking life as I describe the shortness. I have a temporary short, shortage of funds that God will address. Address. Do we have it ready in the message translation? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Words kill, words get life. They either poison or, 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 or fruit you choose. Is that the message translation? That's it? Wow. Holy cow. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to this thought. As believers, we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for his precepts. As believers, we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for his precepts. As believers, we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect of his precepts. As a believer, and when we're opening our mouths, going about our lives, working our jobs, working our business, listen, we have a moral obligation not to speak contrary to what we say we believe. We have a, we have a responsibility to the word of God to present ourselves as believers who only edify, who only encourage, who only build people up. Who, 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 people who were gossip stops at them, backbiting stops at them. We have a moral obligation as believers, as believers, to fortify God's concepts into the minds of men. And how do we do that? We do it with our speech. We do it by edifying others. We do it by edifying God. We do it by encouraging others. 
We do it by encouraging, our, encouraging families, encouraging coworkers. Don't let a coworker walk out of the room and you tear him up from the floor, up from, from the head down to the toes. Don't do that. You should be edifying and encouraging people. Why? We have a moral obligation as believers to, 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 to present God and his precepts in a good light. Amen? Listen to this. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Our tongues can tear down. Our tongues can build up. It can lift the spirit. It can break it. It can bring a smile, and it can bring sorrow. It can garner a frown, or it can garner laughter. It can soothe a soul, or it can agitate a soul. It can confuse, and it can bring clarity. This is what the tongue can do. It can speak life. And it can speak death. It can deceive and it can bring forth truth. The tongue sets the trajectory of our moment. The tongue sets the trajectory of our moment or your moment in the opposing hearer's ear. Whoever you're communicating with, your tongue sets the trajectory in their ears. Trajectory for what? The person you're talking about. Trajectory for what? The event you're about to describe. Trajectory for what? The organization you're about to describe that you're a part of. Your tongue sets a trajectory for the opposing person, for the opposing hearer. What they're about to hear, your tongue sets their trajectory. What kind of trajectory? What are they going to think about that person you're talking about? What are they going to think about that ministry that you're talking about? What are they going to think about that meeting that you're bringing up? The tongue sets the trajectory of the opposing hearer's ears. And when they hear what comes out of your mouth, guess what? You're either inciting those positive emotions about somebody or negative emotions about somebody. (coughs) Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to drop this in your spirit. Especially for married couples or friends. Uh, Friends get in arguments. Friends, you you know, passionate arguments. There's a big difference between a passionate exchange of words and a cutting exchange of words. There's a big difference between a passionate exchange of words and a cutting exchange of words. You know, sometimes things get out of control. Sometimes there's an argument or whatever it is, and, 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 and there's a passionate exchange of words. But I believe that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of a believer, and he can bridle our tongue to the point where those passionate words are not cutting. When words become cutting, you're putting that relationship under strain. Well, no, I'm not. He's still with me. Trust me. You're putting that relationship under a lot of strain. Well, no, 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 I'm not. She's still with me. Trust me. You're putting that relationship under a lot of strain. You know, one of the worst things in marriage, one of the worst things I feel like in marriage is for somebody to be forcing themselves to do the word of God concerning your cutting mouth. No, I want you to make a choice to be here with me. I want you to feel like you can't live without me. I know what the word commands, but at some point your love for me should get past what the word of God is demanding you to do, and you desire to be here with me. But at the point where I'm forcing myself Now, I'm not talking about working through small things, but your cutting words are so deep that I'm telling myself a marital lie that you're edifying, that you lift me up, that you encourage me, and you don't. Because why? Your exchange is always cutting. It's always backbiting. It's always downing. And let me tell you this. You cannot manage your heart that you're cutting up left and right. One day, that heart will say, you know what? Enough is enough. And how did it start? It started with the mouth. Now, in church, we don't like to talk about this. We don't like to talk about it. A lot of times in church, I tell you what, 80% of the message is, husbands, get yourself together. Husbands, it's to serve your wives. Husbands, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Husbands, you need to do X, Y, and Z. And nobody ever says, can you talk to this mouth? Can you talk to this mouth that's cutting? Can you talk to this pouting mouth? Can you talk to this mouth that don't speak when they don't get their way? Can somebody say to this person 
guess what? Hey, you need to get your mouth under control. You know, we did a One Flesh Marital Conference over in uh, Jamaica last year, and we did an exercise, and we sent, we sent the uh, wives out of the room, and we had all the husbands in the room. We said, hey, uh, what's the one thing that your wife can do to really just improve the marital intimacy? You, you know, just, just improve it, and, and things just, 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 just get better. Listen to me. 100% of the husbands said, get the mouth under control. So we brought the wives back in the room. We brought them back in the room, and we sat down. They come back in smiling, this, that, and the other. You know, and some wives on exercises like that, they want to they wanna manage what their husband says. Now, you keep us in a good light when you go up there now. There you go. There you go, garnering lies. It, it's, not, it's not true. And, 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 and so we went around the room and said, now, now, now brother, you go ahead and express you know, it's open. We're, we've been transparent. Me and Pastor Z, we're transparent too. Every brother that stood up, and about five of them stood up, and it, it was like they was two years old. And they were, I said, okay, brother, uh, what can your wife do? And, and one guy just said, uh, uh, he couldn't even say it. All he did was, What are you saying? She need to work on her mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he went on sat down. I said, my God. And, and what is that? that that's, a, that's, a, that? that's a telltale sign that, you know what, you answer this question, but, well, buddy, you're going to get it when we get out of this room, and I'm going to let you know. And here's the thing. When you start saying stuff like, when, you, when you're in a conference where couples are being vulnerable, and you're saying stuff like, hey, l- listen now, l- l- let's keep ourselves in a good light now. No, let's, get, let's, let's put this thing out for the Holy Spirit to address it. And those men went around the room, and one guy said, um, the mouth. I said, what did you say? He said, he said, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth. I said, we can't hear you, brother. He said, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth. And, and, and she was like, just shocked. He said, you yeah, the mouth. And what was it? Your words are cutting. Your words are cutting. Your words are cutting. Your words are cutting. And, and, and you got to know this. So let's, let's look at this thought one more time as we, as we wrap up. <clears throat> Let's read it one more time. <clears throat> well, no, I'm going to my next thought. A big mouth, and boy, I've had one. A big mouth and a short fuse will render you friendless and alone. <laughs> a big mouth and a short fuse will render you friendless and alone. And you wonder why no one wants to be around you. You wonder why you're alone. You know, some, you know, some single people, are, they haven't mastered the art of dialogue. So once they get with somebody, they just talk. And it's like, do you understand that you're supposed to break and allow somebody else to say something? Do you understand that in the exchange of communication? You're supposed to pause after your thought and, and, and let them talk. But I tell you what. You know, if, 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 if you're not working on discipline of mouth as a single person, you're going to have a short fuse and a loud mouth, and it's going to render you friendless and alone. Well, I just say what I'm going to say, and I'm going to go and get it over with, this, that, and the other. And it's like, uh, why do you date unrealistically? Why do you date, why do you date opposite of what it's going to take to have a good marriage? Can't nobody say nothing wrong, you're out of there. Can't nobody miss, miss, say, miss say, you're gone. You, you, but in marriage, you got to work through that. So you might as well get used to it while you're dating. So if, so if the mouth is out of control, you got to just go ahead and say something, uh, brother. Go ahead and say something, sister. Because that mouth is going to be geared, is going to be pointed towards you when you say I do. When you say I do, it's coming towards you. So you might as well start practicing while you're dating. Hey, you may not want to say that. You may not want to. No, 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 no. We, we, we don't talk like that. No, no, no. We, we, we don't talk like that. We, we don't talk like that. We can't go on. Well, I, I guess we can't because in marriage, we got to do the same thing that I'm trying to do here now. Listen, a big mouth and a short fuse will render you friendless and alone. Next thought. We should all deem our mouths as wells of wisdom and encouragement. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Look at this. Verse 1. 
A soft answer curves wrath or turns away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. A soft answer turns away wrath. Remember, you can't argue with a humble person. A soft answer, it, it, it turns away wrath, but grievous words stirs up anger. Words, mouths is out of control. It stirs up anger. And we got to learn to the art of soft answers. Listen, if you're in communication with anybody, if you're dating, if you're married, listen, you got to learn that tonality in your speech is everything. It's everything. I'll give an example. I didn't know she beat her husband. Emphasis on beat. I didn't know she beat her husband. Well, well who else does it? I didn't, I, I didn't know she beat her husband. Well, who else? Husband? Did she beat her kids? Tonality is everything. So when there's a soft answer, when, I, when the word says soft answer curves wrath, you got to pay attention to the emphasis you put on words. And listen to me. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I can't. That right there ain't going to curve nothing. What that's saying is, I don't want to go through this. I'm going to get out of it. And, 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 and I got this in my notes before we, before we get out of here. Listen to this. I, I, I got to say this. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Listen to this. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Be on guard against uh, the word if. When you have offended or hurt someone. Be on guard against the word if. When the mouth has offended or hurt someone. Watch this. This is the worst thing you can say. This is the worst thing you can say when your mouth has. Watch this. I'm sorry if I was insensitive. I'm sorry if I was insensitive. That's not an apology. I'm sorry if you took what I said offensively. That's not an apology. And if you're the one making the apology and find yourself inclined to insert an if, try something more straightforward like, like this. Watch this. I'm sorry I was insensitive. I'm sorry I was insensitive. But people who throw that little if in there, they don't mean, they're still protecting their little bad language, their little out of control mouth. Well, I'm sorry if you, if you found that offensive. No, you don't, you, you don't communicate like that. Here, here's how you say it. You says, you, says, you says, I'm sorry I was insensitive. I want you to know that will not happen again. This is how the tongue gets in control now. I'm sorry I was insensitive. I'm sorry it was inaccurate what I said. Not, I'm sorry. It, no, if what I said was kind of, you, you found that inaccurate, listen, I'm sorry. If what you said. No, it's what you said. So watch inserting the word if. Because if we're not careful, our if, our if can turn into an insult when you say stuff like that. I'm sorry if I was insensitive. No, you're insulting my intelligence. You were insensitive. Your mouth was out of control. Well, sweetheart, I'm sorry. You know, if, if you found that offensive, I, I did find it offensive. And the words you're looking for, I'm sorry my words were offensive. Do you hear what I'm saying? Listen, why is this so important? Because if, when you throw if in your communication with your mouth, if can cause the other person listening to you to question their own reactions to your actions that offended them. Think about that. You've offended the crap out of somebody, and then you say, well, if what I said, if what I said offended you, so the hearer goes, am I crazy? Did anybody else hear what she said? You make other people think they're crazy. Here's another one. When people are communicating with you, uh, 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 when people are communicating with you, and, 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 and they're not hearing you right, I want you to stop using never mind with your mouth. Stop using never mind with your mouth. Stop using it when people didn't hear you clearly or didn't speak clearly. You know, I'm guilty of that. You know, I'm walking off. I'm trying to talk to her. She's back here. She said, what did you say? Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. 
No, I, I'll go in and get it myself. And you think you're doing something. Well, listen, I can't hear you when your voice is going that way. Turn around and talk to me. But you know what I'll say? Ne- ne- never mind, never mind, never mind. I got it, I got it, I got it. Listen, never mind. Stop, stop, stop doing that with our, our, our communication. People will say to themselves, when you use the word never mind all the time, when people say, huh, what did you say? Ne- ne- never mind, never mind. When you do that, people will say to themselves, why should I interact with him or her if, if, if I'm only to be scorned for not hearing everything they say perfectly? That's what never mind means. N- and never mind. Yeah, with a group of people, and, and she said, what did she say? And, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. And, and what's happening is people are being indicted by you for not hearing you perfectly. And your way out, when somebody says repeat it, is never mind, never mind, stop that. Why? That tongue is not designed for that. It's designed to speak accurately. I say, you know what, you didn't hear what I said? Let me say it again with my tongue. Amen? <sighs> Woo, glory to God. I think I'm shouting better than, you, better than you point at the TV. I mean, I'm preaching better than you point at the TV. Hallelujah. We're going to finish these thoughts, and we're going to get up out of here. <clears throat> like Kent Jones on that, uh, my God is awesome. He says, let's get on up out of here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Wild and mean outbursts may be short, but they really sour the atmosphere of our home and relationships. Wild and mean outbursts may be short, but they really sour the atmosphere of our homes and our relationship. See, the tongue's got to be in control. It's, it's, you got to be in control of it. So you got to guard what you're putting in your heart. What are you putting in your heart? We've said in this pandemic, in, the, in this time, you know, some people are, are, are just, they're running on empty on the word of God, spending no time with God, spending no time in prayer, and their own edge, and their words are showing it. You know, wow. And mean comments. It's just, it's just, it's, it's insane. Wild and mean outbursts may be short. They may be short. But they really sour the atmosphere of our home and relationships. And if you're on a conference call or a Zoom call and your spouse or your kids walk in the room, for the love of God, don't have a wild and mean outburst. For eight seconds, guess what? You just messed up the whole day. And you got to control your pointing. Your pointing is communication, too. And the little kid go, oh, my God, man alive. What is that? That's, that's wild and mean. Hey, shh, come on, come on, I'll be with you. That's, that's nice, but wild and mean outbursts, although they're short, they can ruin the atmosphere and a relationship. And a relationship. <clears throat> Last thought. We were given our tongues to praise God, according to the word. We were given our tongues to praise God and to encourage mankind to encounter his goodness. We were given our tongues to praise God and to encourage mankind to encounter his goodness. We were given our tongues to praise God and encourage mankind to encounter his goodness. If our talking does not involve introducing people to Jesus once a week, once a day, Twice a week, twice a day, five times a month, what are we even saying? What what are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, you can call your homeboy up and encourage him. You can go up to your homeboy's house, laugh and giggle with him, but but, but it doesn't stop right there. You got to use your tongue to encourage and encountering and bridge and, and, and bring men closer to Jesus. What is that? Talking, using this mouth to talk about Jesus. Encourage mankind and encourage an encounter with Jesus with mankind. It's the most powerful thing to do with your tongue. And I'm at the point now where, 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 where the Holy Spirit is, so, is speaking so profound to me in the area of, watch what you say, in the area of, the, 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 the words is coming off of people's mouths. While it's coming off, the Holy Spirit is confirming yea or nay. It's confirming yea or nay. It's confirming they're empty. It's confirming they're lying. It's confirming they're backbiting. What is that? You got to spend time with God. You got to spend time with God. And out of the, out of, Jesus is out of the abundance of this heart. The mouth should speak 
not just to friends. Strangers talking about Jesus. The dry cleaner talking about Jesus. The Amazon driver talking about Jesus. The FedEx driver talking about Jesus. The cashier talking about Jesus. Listen, out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth is speaking. The question is, what are we speaking? What are we speaking? And who are we speaking to? And who are we speaking about? I'm a firm believer that as of tonight, the Holy Spirit will provoke something in you to bridle your tongue. If it's not kind, if it's not true, if it's not necessary, I'm a firm believer that the Holy Spirit is going to move mightily in your life in the area of bridling the tongue. The title for tonight was The Power of Our Tongue. I pray to God that you was blessed by the Word of God. Hallelujah. If you want to be born again, Click on that tab, and we can get you born again. If you want to rededicate your life, rededication is twofold. Some people just say, you know, I want to rededicate my life to draw closer to God. Some say, I want to rededicate my life because there's been a gap that was caused by sin. A lot of times, sins is not just, it's, it's, it's not just drinking. It's, not just, it's, it's the sins of the mouth. And some of you right now need to text your spouse and say, listen, I repent for what I said and what I've said. I need to get this mouth under control. Some of you need to text your spouse right now and go, you know what? This cursing, it's got to stop. You got to get yourself under control, you know, and, and you should be encouraging rededication. Well, you're not, you're not my Holy Spirit. I'm your husband. I'm your wife. I see your actions. I love you enough to ask you, did you hear what he said tonight? Did you understand what he said tonight? He was deadly accurate. The words are cutting. They are affecting me. I am manufacturing this happiness in my marriage. I am saying that I'm happy and I'm not because you're cutting. You cut me down. You cut the kids down. You curse everybody out around the house. And, 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 and then out of the next mouth, you're talking about God. You're confusing our kids. I'm talking to you. Rededicate your life back to the Lord. And not just to the Lord. Rededicate it back to your spouse. Rededicate back to your spouse that you will edify and encourage him or her. You will speak the things of the Lord. You will speak life only. You will have those three gatekeepers in motion concerning your mouth. Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? You will do that. Rededicate your life. Click on that tab right there, right there on your screen. Number three, if you want to uh, receive the Holy Spirit with the bapt- uh, uh, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, it's a baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's a free gift. It's given to you from the Lord. And guess what? It's not a prerequisite to get in heaven, but it is a gift. It's not spooky. It's a gift available to you. Click on that tab, and we got people standing on, uh, 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 standing by that can pray pray that prayer with you. Amen. And if God is calling you to join XL Church, we're a simple church. We believe the word of God. The pulpit is not God. I'm not God. God is God. And we provoke relationships with God. We tell people, listen, God has got to be your God. You've got to be connected to the true vine. You've got to be connected with God. You've got to have a personal relationship with God. Well, I sing the paint off the wall. Don't sing the paint off the wall, and you don't have a relationship with God. Well, I, well I, I can do X, Y, and Z in the children. Don't, don't, don't just teach the children, and you don't have a relationship with God. We're called to excel in God and excel in life. And if God is calling you to excel church, click on that tab. We'll be glad to have you to join the team. Amen? On behalf of Pastor Z, myself, Marvion Zaria, and the XL team, we want to say God bless you, have a blessed day, and a better tomorrow. Amen. As happy people, we find ways up and get understanding. As a church, we must be filled with lots of friends. All that matters is God is true. We value who you are and not what you do. Everyone can come in and start a new. Ooh.